So what I, what I would like to do in the next 12 and a half minutes uh, is, uh, where's the timer? Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> um, so I'd like you all to visit our website, heroicimagination.org. And we have a lot of interesting exercises that uh, you can do, for, uh, students can do, uh, teachers can do, uh, hopefully people in corporations can do. But the main thing I've been doing for the past six, eight years is developing a new program which I think is creating a revolution in education, in traditional education, for high schools and colleges and hopefully soon for middle school and primary school. We call our program Understanding Human Nature, your human nature and everybody else's. Uh, and we call it that because it's really basic social psychology repackaged for uh, uh, school systems. Uh, our program, what's revolutionary about it is uh, young people live in a visual world. So each of our lessons, we have six lessons we've developed, we're in the process of developing six more. I'll mention what they are, and I'm gonna talk about one in great detail now. Uh, our lessons are, are built around provocative videos. So teachers don't lecture anymore. Te we give teachers a script, and once they learn the script, uh, their job is to be like an athletic coach. If you're an athletic coach and you have a team, you assume Players vary in their ability, but they all have special abilities. And your job is give them the material to bring out their abilities. So we want to get teachers away from the notion of I have smart students, not so smart students, and dumb students. And then teachers treat them that way. Uh, and so, we're gonna, so we give the teachers all the material. They have the videos, the lessons. And now teachers don't lecture anymore because they are... Uh, uh, provocateur, agent provocateur, they're going to provoke students. And now student teachers don't ask questions for the whole class because we know boys never answer. Girls always get their hand up first. So now the teacher divides the class in pairs, okay? So you two, you two. When I ask a question, I want you to talk to each other about the answer and then write down your answer. And occasionally the teacher will say, uh, is any team wants to share with the class? So the po it's very provocative, it moves very fast, and we cover a lot of material. So each lesson is 20 or 30 pages that I've spent a long time developing with my colleagues in San Francisco. Uh, and, but we, in, in any school system, um, these lessons can be 30 minutes or 60 minutes or th ideally 30 minutes over th uh, three or four uh, days. So our programs are, how do you transform passive bystanders into active heroes? Uh, and we have this whole, whole lesson about this. Uh, another lesson is, how do you transform prejudice and discrimination into understanding and acceptance? Uh, uh, how do you transform negative group pressure, which young people feel all the time, to smoke, to take drugs, uh, to have an unwanted sexual pressure, into positive group uh, pressure? How do you resist the power of unjust authority? So we have these programs, and hopefully we want to develop new ones on um, uh, dynamic persuasion. Uh, how to understand uh, persuasive influences on you from salespeople, from media, but also now <coughs> from um, uh, cults, from uh, terrorist groups. Uh, and we want to have programs on sustainability conservation. So ideally now we, we have six programs, and I think by the end of the year we hope to have ten. Uh, what's exciting to me is our programs that now are going global. That is, uh, we are focused mostly on school systems, but now we want to branch out and include, uh, just, just refashion our material to work as well in corporations. Um, I'm Phil Zimbardo, president and founder of the Heroic Imagination Project. Our main focus is promoting the idea that heroes are ordinary people who take extraordinary action in challenging situations in their lives. They're effective heroes. Do the right thing when other people are doing the wrong thing, or more often when they're doing nothing. And also to expose evil uh, in all of its many forms as a whistleblower. We believe heroism begins in the mind, begins with thinking about yourself as a hero. Thinking about yourself as having an inner hero that we will help express through our lessons, our ways of rethinking the nature of good and evil. 
transforming bystander apathy into heroic action. Bystander apathy is what characterizes what's known as the bystander effect. In emergency situations, the more people present, paradoxically, the less likely anyone's to help. That's called a bystander effect. It was generated many years ago by the brutal murder in New York City of the woman Kitty Genovese, where many people heard her screams and did nothing. As soon as one person helps, then in seconds, that help is expanded. Our message is be the one, be that person who ignores the social norm of doing nothing and creates a new social norm of doing something. So these are our six lessons, as I said, and for each lesson, uh, there are the same eight activities that the teacher shows the video and says, why were the people in the video not doing anything to help a, a person in distress? So what I wanna do very quickly go through the, uh, how we present this material in, in training sessions. Uh, and we're going to have a training session on Monday. 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 Natasha and I will do a training session um, 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 uh, on, on our, our modules. So this is fostering the growth mindset. I'm going to have to skip through quickly because I only have six minutes and 14 seconds. Uh, <laughs> so we, all, we always begin by whoever doing the training says, let me tell you a little bit about myself but you already know that. Uh, and then what is the Heroic Imagination Project? Uh, here it is, we teach skills and awareness needed to make effective decisions in challenging situations. What we do is we provide knowledge, tools, strategies, and exercise, and it's all based on scientific research. So for everything we say, we say, here's the article, here's the study uh, that you can count on. Uh, and so today we're gonna to study the growth mindset. What is the growth mindset? Why, why do we want it? Why do we need it? What does it have to do with heroes and how can we get it? Now we stop, again, we're not gonna do it. Uh, uh, do you know anything about this? Uh, students talk to each other. Uh, so for all of our uh, lessons, we begin with what are the learning objectives? Why are we here? We wanna describe what the growth mindset is. State how expectations that you hold can become self-fulfilling prophecies. We want to outline the psychology of mindset. We want to practice the skills you can use to cultivate a growth mindset. Uh, so the learning objective, explore how mindset affects others around them, enabling them to become a more effective force in encouraging healthy group interactions. Um, so the hidden power of social situations. Uh, and we give, it's the beginning of a class, you've just gotten your grade back, uh, you didn't do so well, you got a C, uh, and, and uh, you, you tried hard, but you didn't do your absolute best. If you've, have you ever been in this situation, think about when you didn't do as well as you could and then talk about with your partner to share this. Um, so how would you feel, what would you say to yourself? Whoops. So now we're gonna explore the science of situations. So video one is gonna be famous people who failed. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. This is Michael Jordan. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. So if you don't take risks, you Dismissed never from drama before. school with a and note that read, wasting her time, she's too shy to put her best foot forward. Turned down by the Decca recording company who said, we don't like their sound and guitar music is on the way out. Cut from the high school basketball team, he went home, locked himself in his room and cried. A teacher told him he was too stupid to learn anything and he should go into a field where he might succeed by virtue of his pleasant personality. Fired from a newspaper because he lacked imagination and had no original ideas. His fiance died, he failed in business twice, he had a nervous breakdown, and he was defeated in eight elections. If you've never failed, you've never lived. Life equals risk. So again, uh, in each nation that's using our program, we encourage them to develop, uh, use or develop uh, videos which are culturally appropriate. Um, so, were you surprised by anything? What would happen if the people in the videos gave up when the going got tough? And again, the uh, partners share this. So let's move on.
greatness. It's just something we made up. Somehow we've come to believe that greatness is a gift reserved for a chosen few, for prodigies, for superstars. And the rest of us can only stand by watching. You can forget that. Greatness is not some rare DNA strand. It's not some precious thing. Greatness is no more unique to us than breathing. We're all capable of it. All of us. So what do you think the main idea of this video is? So throughout, we show the video, we stimulate the, to think about this, to share the ideas. Uh, and then, uh, so mindset. What is mindset? There are two mindsets, growth mindset versus fixed mindset. Intelligence is static versus intelligence is uh, modifiable. Give up easily or you persist and make no setbacks. Bottom line is every ability, every talent is perfectible by two things, putting in more effort and more practice. So the fixed mindset that we all have, we all say to ourselves, I am not good at this, I am good at this. Women are not good at math. Uh, black people are not good at this. Jewish people are not good at this. Italians, so we have this, so it's almost a prejudice, but it, it puts people in boxes. And part of our program is we wanna break open those boxes to say everything you do Everything other people do can be improved, can be uh, by willing to take risk, but you gotta put in practice, you gotta put in effort. So the difference between uh, young people who um, practice uh, violin, or young people who practice any sport, is 10,000 hours or more practice. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell tells us this in the, his book, The Outliers. So the difference between people who succeed in life and people who are not as successful is they simply work harder. They work harder in a focused way with, with good teachers, with good support. And that's, that's the part of our message is learn how to develop a growth mindset. It not only would change your life, but will make your life have a bigger impact on everyone else. Thank you so much. The Hero Roundtables are the global events that ask the question, what is a hero? You've just seen one hero talk. To find more and join the conversation, visit our website or social media.